All right, welcome. Uh, this video will review the cryptanalysis techniques of frequency analysis and correlation of frequency. Um, so as we go through this, it, it might be helpful for you to have the slides for lecture three up uh, while you watch this video, just in case you need to refer to it uh, during our discussion. Okay, so before we really begin, let's go ahead and create uh, a motivating example or an example that we can refer to uh, during our discussion. So for that, I'm going to use uh, my senior project that I referenced in um, in lecture, and the link will be on the should be on the screen right now. Um, and this is this is the this is the site. So um, there are a couple different tabs that you can go to, and what is going we're going to use is we're going to create um, a Caesar cipher encryption of some basic text. So got some text here I'm just gonna copy it paste it in right there I'm um, gonna enter the key of s and if you want to do so if, it's not quite as useful for Caesar but Caesar ciphers but for these other ciphers if you want to step through one letter at a time um, these are the the buttons that you would use but for right now we're just gonna go ahead and encrypt the whole thing okay so now we have our cipher text uh, encrypted with the key S, or in other words, that's that would be a shift of uh, 18. So how are we going to try to reverse this encryption? Um, well, first thing we need to do is, of course, a frequency analysis. Now, uh, you'll remember that frequency analysis is simply just um, a, a ratio of the occurrence of any given letter in the ciphertext. Right. So in normal English, we see that certain letters appear more frequently and less frequently, depending on their usage in words. Well, um, by uh, if we've only encrypted with one letter, and I should actually emphasize that frequency analysis and correlation of frequency only work on a Caesar cipher. They only work um, on something encrypted with a single character key. All right, so if you have something that's a Vignier cipher or whatever, you need to do other things first. Um, you can only work with, um, correlation of frequency will only give you useful information if you're just working with a Caesar cipher. So remember that and, and program, write your program accordingly. Okay, so if we have a shift of S, um, then all of these values should be about the same, but just in a different place, right? That's what we talked about in lecture, that the statistics will be consistent, but shifted. They'll be in a different place. Um, well, let's go ahead and run the frequency analysis. And so we have a tool here. Uh, we just come to decryption, frequency analysis, and then the do. And if you're interested uh, in a, a different explanation, um, the learn side of any of these will, will give you information. But for right now, we're just going to use the do. And I've got this cool feature that we can just grab the cipher text from the other page, and it goes right there. So let's analyze it. What is it? Well, we just have a bunch of ratios, right? So when we pull this, um, when we do this analysis, we we really just get a number of that represents how frequently it appears in the um, in the ciphertext. And so really the frequency analysis could be called just frequency ratio calculation uh, because that's all it really gives you. It doesn't tell you any more information than that. Now, if you have the idea that you're just gonna kind of match these up with typical frequencies, that's gonna be really painful for you. Um, that That's kind of hard to do unless you're going to do some use the correlation of frequency formula. So let's go ahead. Now that we have these frequencies, let's take a look uh, again at the correlation of frequency formula and try to understand what it's actually doing a little bit better. So we've got this here. And the, the, the point, the basis, again, is that the multiplication of the frequencies, and we'll talk about what frequencies in just a second, makes the correct shift value stand out. So let's take a look at what values we're actually working with here. And don't mind the, the first part of this, this uh, formula for now. 
let's just take a look at the f of c and the p of x. Okay, what, let's try to figure out what those mean. f of c means the frequency of character c in their ciphertext. In other words, that's these numbers that we've computed here. Um, and yes, these aren't in alphabetical order. That's a bug, but um, you know, I wrote this over five years ago, so you can't fault me too much. And I can't, can't fix it, so there's no, no sense in pointing it out too much. Okay, so the, the frequency, the f of c, is, is the number that we got on the other page, right? So if we want, and we're going we're gonna to use, we're going to talk about each character individually, and that's what this summation means. So let's say that, let's just work with the very first letter in the ciphertext, which in this case is L. The frequency of L is 0.1395, etc. Right Now, what the correlation of frequency does is it multiplies that by the frequency of what could have been the plain text character. All right, so this is where we start to incorporate I. Now, if you'll remember from the example we talked about in class, we're going to look at all 25 shifts. Now, yes, I'm starting at zero here, but zero, a shift of zero means you actually didn't change any of the letters. So you didn't, your ciphertext would be the exact same as your plain text if you were to shift by zero because you didn't change anything. So really zero doesn't do us any good um, because if it's plain text, there's no point in doing any of these. Okay, so for the remaining 25 shifts, um, we need to consider um, this correlation of frequency. So for the time being, and since in your program, you'll, you'll consider all 25, but for just right now, Let's consider a shift with the letter D, which would be 3, okay? So I is going to be 3, and we're going to plug that into the formula right here, right? So C minus 3. And in this case, if we're taking a look at the letter L, then what we're going to do is go up 3. Now, I'm not going to use this, actually, because... Um, it's not in alphabetical order. So let's take a look at some actual code. Um, well, let's take a look at something that's actually in alphabetical order. Here we've got the typical, the expected frequency of the letter L, but that's not what we're interested in right now. We're interested in the expected frequency of three letters before L. In other words, one, two, three, this frequency, the frequency of I. Now, why are we talking about that? Now, let's kind of recap. So here, in this formula, we're taking the frequency of the ciphertext letter, which, again, is this 0 0.1395 number of the first letter L. Now, if the key was D, which it wasn't, because we encrypted it with the key with the letter S, it, but if it was encrypted with D, then I would be three, and uh, we would go back three letters and get the regular frequency of, um, of that character, those three before that. So in this case, the letter I, as we talked, showed, as we showed you here, okay? So the frequency of L in the ciphertext times by the regular frequency of I. Why are we doing that? Well, let's take a look back at this graph. The idea of correlation of frequency, the basis, actually let's look at this again. The basis is the multiplication of this frequency by this frequency will make the correct shift value stand out. In other words, take a look at E. It's a really tall value compared to some of the other letters in the alphabet in terms of its frequency. So if we, if we multiply this value by itself, if we happen to multiply it by itself, then what happens is we get a much taller value. And since that's going to be the case for any of the high values 
the like A and H, I, N, O, uh, and T, those are really common letters, right? So if we multiply those by that same number, then it'll be really big. And the, the, the summation of all of those multiplications will be higher than if we were multiplying E by J. Um, because it, you just don't get as big of a number as if you were squaring this. So that's what's going on right here. We're saying, all right, let's multiply this by what we think it was and do that for all letters in the ciphertext. Um, well, all the frequencies of the ciphertext, so these numbers here. Um, and if it's, if it's really big, then we'll know it. And that shows up in this kind of a situation. So you see that, th that three in, in this instance, and this is a different example, so might not be as helpful, but um, three, six, 10, and 14 in this example were a lot higher. Well, let's actually do something a little bit more helpful. Let's take this ciphertext and save it to a file, okay? So I'm gonna copy this. We're gonna put it in um, this file right here. And I'm going to, oh, let's take out that new space real quick. All right, I'm gonna save this and I'll, I'll let me snip here. Okay, so I'm going to save it in this folder, and the reason why is because this is this is the the program that I wrote to test um, to do the homework um, before you did it. So I'm saving it here so that that um, that script has easy access, so I don't have to change directories. Okay, so I'm going to save it there. Now I'm actually going to run um, the frequency analysis. Well. The, the frequency analysis isn't very helpful. So we're just going to do the correlation of frequency, but we do need to um, grab the frequency first. So I'm going to make a, I've got my little cheat sheet here. So I'm going to get the frequencies first. Well, I need to create an instance. Um, and then the name, this is just how I've done it. Uh, the name of the file, so. Now, okay, so what I've done here, and I'm sorry for the, the messy code, but um, I imported, I, I grabbed the file and, and just created uh, a Python object with it. And you don't, you don't need to understand Python. Um, I'm just, to, to get this example, I'm just trying to show you the actual values that we get from doing the correlation of frequency, okay? So I've grabbed the, the f frequencies of the text and now I'm going to print out the correlation of frequencies uh, number. All right, so Okay, so here we have, um, and what my function does is it sorts the results that it, it returns by the highest correlation of frequency values. So you can see that a shift of 18 had a, a value of 0 0.073, uh, 7 had a pretty good value, 5, etc. So actually the, the default of, of my method here is to return the top five results, and that was kind of an arbitrary number, but I didn't want to be throwing too much around. And if you take a look at, at um, just what 18 means, that means a shift of 18, and 
that means S. And that happens to be the, the key that we encrypted our original plain text with. So this has correctly identified the shift with which we encrypted our plain text um, simply by doing this multiplication of frequencies um, as the formula shows here and here. Um, I hope this makes sense. Uh, again, you want to remember that correlation of frequency is what actually makes frequency analysis useful because frequency analysis is just a bunch of ratios of letters um, compared with the length of the text. The correlation of frequency also only works with Caesar ciphers. So you've got to be dealing with a Caesar cipher first before um, correlation of frequency is going to be helpful because it can't take into account multiple key values uh, for different letters. It just doesn't make sense in the context of this formula. So hopefully this makes sense. Uh, please post questions to Piazza if uh, it wasn't clear or if you needed further help. Um, but hopefully correlation frequency makes a lot more sense now.